Larry, what the hell is you got? Larry! Larry, you can't just... Oh, Larry! Oh, are you all right? How did you... Larry! Right, right, right. What's going on here? Oh, sir, I'm arrested. Oh, oh. The Slap. Yeah! <laughs> well, there you go. Welcome back, guys. Man, oh man, it's the second day of October, and already we have the October surprise. Yes. We all know that Dougie is the new masculine man, right? Interesting part of how people have talked about your role here is how your role has reshaped the perception of masculinity. And I'm not sure you planned on that, but you are a incredibly supportive spouse. Has that been an evolution for you? And do you think that's part of the role you might play uh, as first gentleman? It's funny. I've, I've started to think a lot about this. I've always been like this. My dad was like this. And uh, to me, it's the right thing to do, you know, support women. Right. But hold on, guys. Hold on. We have a dropping bombshell report that says that Dougie likes to do, uh, let's see, how you say this, uh, DV. I can't say it on YouTube because you know they're going to strike me. He can't keep his hands to himself. Yeah. Mr. Dougie here, the new masculine man, has a history of putting his hands on women. Now, we have a story that just broke out here. 2012, him and his girlfriend went out to France to see a show, and the young lady was trying to skip the line. And so she offered the valet some money, like 100 euros, to skip the line. And while doing so, she put her hand on the valet's shoulder. Mr. Dougie here thought that was flirting. So he went up, pulled her by the shoulder, smelt her around, smacks her. She spins over and falls, gets up and smacks him back. Okay, this is the new masculine man, right? Has being second gentleman changed your own view of perceived gender roles or what it means to be a man? Oof, that's this is something I've I've thought about a lot and something I've spoken about a lot. There's too much of toxicity, it, it, masculine toxicity out there, and there, it, we've kind of confused what it means to be a man, what it means to be masculine. Where you've got this trope out there that you've got to be tough and you know angry and and lash out to be strong. I just it's just the opposite. You know, strength is how you show your love for people. Strength is how you are for people and how you have their back and how you, you stick up for other, other people and pushing up, pushing out against bullies. I mean, that's what I believe it is. So every time I can speak against to this toxicity, I, we're seeing it with our younger people, we're seeing it in our discourse and our politics, in the media, you're seeing it as it relates to so many of the issues that we're, we're pushing back on. So um, I think it's a problem and I'm gonna continue to use this platform every time I get to, to speak out against this toxic masculinity that's out there. Yeah. Now this is the same Dougie that in 2008, he stepped out on his wife and impregnated her, the nanny, the same nanny that was raising the two kids and teaching them. He slept with her, got her pregnant, and somehow she lost a kid. But he still gave her, what, $80,000 um, settlement and made her sign a uh, NDA. Yeah, this is the guy, right? CNN exclusively obtained a statement from Doug M. Hoff about uh, that affair. Of course, this was after alleged details of that relationship were published by a British tabloid. And in his statement, he says, quote, 
During my first marriage, Kirsten and I went through some tough times on account of my actions. I took responsibility, and in the years since, we worked through things as a family and have come out stronger on the other side. Now, that British tabloid, the Daily Mail, had reported that Emhoff had a relationship with his then young daughter's teacher, which resulted in the end of his first marriage. So when you hear people, especially men, who talk about they pro-women's rights and all this, you got to keep the eye on them because they're abusive. They are abusive. Uh, a guy, well, two guys who actually not only don't trust women, but are literally running on a platform of authoritarianism and misogyny. That literally should be their their slogan, because that's what it is. So you want you know people who literally are outwardly misogynistic in their policies and the way they talk about women and the policies in which they have already enacted and have talked about enacting. Or Kamala Harris and Tim Walls. It's completely binary. So this is another clear example of Kamala and her poor choices. She had poor choices in VP. She had poor choices in men. And basically she don't know what the hell she's doing as a CEO of a country. All right, guys, we got about 35 more days left. And I said this before in my previous post. Guys, we just seen what happened with the hurricane situation. This could happen the week of election. All right. So I implore you guys, if your state have early voting, as soon as it's open, go and vote. Do not wait on Tuesday, November 5th, because anything can happen. It could rain on your parade. The whole roof could fall down on your head. Your house could float away, okay? Do not wait to vote on the day of Tuesday, November 5th. Go vote early, bring a friend. And then the later on in the week, you start talking to other people and try to get them to vote early. Do not wait until the 5th of November because it could rain, it could snow, you can have earthquake. We could be in World War IV, fuck around with Kamala. All right. So soon as it's open, take your ass down there and vote. All right. And hit that like button. All right. I need you guys to hit that like button. I'll see you next time.